session two on our series of performance information uh, titled the ABCs of EPDs uh, deals with growth traits. Uh, fairly simple on the surface, but we'll break each one of them down and uh, explain the proper use of each one uh, in, a, in a performance evaluation and a selection program. So growth is only one side of the equation. Uh, what we need to decide with, with EPDs is a picture like this more profitable or is this more profitable? And, and those two answers, they, those cattle might look very similar, uh, but what makes them profitable might be much different. So it's important to keep in mind that the growth traits that we measure are a lot on the output side, but no very little on the input side. So the traits involved, uh, obviously weaning weight would be the first and foremost one. Uh, it's been around for a while. Most people are familiar with using it. Yearling weight, milk, milk and growth, also known as total maternal or maternal weaning weight, and then a mature size would be another one, and there are some others that we can use to assess uh, performance. The first one, weaning weight, obviously expressed in pounds. Uh, it is adjusted to 205 days of age in most cases, adjusted for the age of the dam. Uh, young cows are adjusted up, uh, middle-aged cows are, uh, are not adjusted at all, and then actually cows uh, in the past the age of say 10 or 12 in some instances will be adjusted as well. Uh, the, the groups that are assigned are same-sex calves within a 90-day age window. Uh, those would be the contemporaries. Uh, weaning weight windows are not allowed to go outside of 90 days. There's just too much environmental impact on those cattle for them to be comparable. And remember it's output only. Some of the dollar value indexes may help monitor cow size, uh, but again, overselection for weaning weight could cause cows to get pretty big. Yearling weight, uh, a lot like weaning weight, just down the chain in terms of growth a bit. It is expressed in pounds, and again, adjusted for age of dam, adjusted to 365 days of age in most cases, uh, and they are again, same sex calves in a 90 day age window. Uh, and it's important that if calves were not in the same weaning contemporary group, they cannot be in the same yearling contemporary group. They only get smaller, contemporary groups cannot get larger. So as I stated, weaning group contemporaries establish the yearling group. Again, output only. Uh, consider measures of efficiency when you're discussing yearling weight, uh, especially when you're keeping females back in the herd. Uh, for instance, dollar energy in Angus is a good one, uh, dollar baldy maternal index in Hereford, uh, or British Maternal Index in the Shorthorn breed, and then maternal weight uh, in some others as well. Milk. Um, it might surprise some of you to see milk in a growth trait, but it is more of a performance trait than it is a maternal trait. Uh, we'll cover it again in session three uh, with the maternal parts, uh, but weaning weight is the only data used to determine milk. It is expressed in pounds of calf at weaning, not in pounds of milk. Uh, so it's essentially the genetically unexplainable portion of weaning weight. Uh, the cow gets so much attributed to her growth based on her, her own performance, what's left over is considered milk. It was her ability to make that calf outgrow what it was expected to do. Uh, so it needs to be considered in a window of acceptability uh, given your environment and your feed resources. Not necessarily maximized uh, as we can see it will have some detrimental impact. Milk and growth, total maternal and maternal weaning weight. Uh, those are simple uh, uh, terms that we basically take half of the weaning weight EPD and we add milk to it. It is expressed in pounds of calf at weaning, much like the two traits are, and it is used to simplify uh, the selection process, but it can lead to excessive milk, low growth cattle, or on the flip side of that, really high growth, low milk cattle if it's uh, looked at individually too hard. Uh, it is a measure of overall maternal production. Some of the cows that are high in total maternal can have some pretty high maintenance costs, so it needs to be used in caution uh, and can be broken down into milk and weaning weight fairly easily, uh, but that's what the trait is designed to do. <clears throat> so there are some measures, measures of mature size, uh, and it's a, an important note to, uh, to understand that frame score is the most highly heritable trait we measure. Uh, we can change how big our cows are faster than anything, how, what, basically what they measure at the hip. 
Yearling height is a trait used in Angus. It's uh, expressed in inches, adjusted at 365 days of age. And then there's mature height and mature weight. Uh, that's a, a measure thereafter. And I think uh, most of us understand that a lot of cows are quite a bit heavier on the scale uh, than they are at the coffee shop. If you ask producers how big their cows are, most likely they're going to underestimate how big those cattle uh, really weigh, um, especially here in the Midwest. Weaning weight and yearling weight can also be useful uh, when you're talking about mature size. So what are some other tools? Dollar value indexes have been used uh, fairly widely in recent years. They try to take uh, the input side of the equation and consider true profitability uh, by measuring several traits at the same time. Another trait uh, used in Angus cattle is residual average daily gain. It's a, a measure of efficiency. And then carcass weight, which will be covered again in session four. Uh, but carcass weight, too, is a, is a measure of growth um, and the ability of an animal to gain uh, weight on feed. So it can be used in conjunction with the others. So in summary, uh, performance EPDs do not account for input costs. So overselection can be a bit dangerous uh, to your feed bill. Uh, it can lead to excessive cow size and milk on its own should be managed and not maximized. One of the things that can happen if we over select for milk, uh, we can harm a, th a trait like rebreeding rate, which is much more profitable uh, than, than a few pounds of milk. Uh, another good idea is to record your cow weights annually. It's a good way to assess mature size. It's a good way to assess milk production based on body condition score changes. So always a good measure to assess your cow herd and how they might be tracking over time. 